Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to wait on the Lord. The Bible says when you wait upon the Lord, He renews your strength. And if you feel weak today that you don't have enough strength to carry on, maybe you're going through the day feeling like it's dragging. I want to encourage you. This song says that as we wait upon the Lord, He will renew our strength. Amen. And the Bible Amen. says also that He will make us mount up on wings like eagles. That means He's going to lift us up to the high places when we wait upon Him. So what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? It just means, you know, in worship and adoration for all that He's done. I mean, there's really so much to worship God for. And I think that's one of the ways we wait on Him, mm -hmm. just to worship Him in His presence. Spending time in His Word is one Waiting of the great things. The yeah, to wait on God. And he, he, he lifts up your spirit. I mean, mm. if you're down in the dumps and you feel like life is like weighed upon you, just wait upon the Lord. That means to spend time with Him. I mean, just take His Word mm. and say, Lord, show me who you are from your Word. Yeah. And, and pray to Him and say, Lord, I thank you for revealing yourself to me. God yeah. reveals Himself to people who wait upon yeah. Him. You know, David said, I will wait on the Lord and I will be of good courage and He will strengthen my heart. Right. I mean, when we wait on Him, He strengthens our heart because there are a lot of things in this world that try to put us down. But God, He says, when you wait on me, I will strengthen you. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. And so I really love that scripture because, you know, whenever you're feeling down, the best thing you can do is wait on Him. Mm. Wait on Him. That's a great thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and worshiping the Lord can also be, you can pray in the Spirit. Mm. That's also waiting upon yeah. the Lord. You know, if you've faced like many obstacles, like if you faced a, maybe you've lost a job or something, or your, your body's feeling sick, or maybe um, somebody died, or some bad incident has happened in your life, just run to the Lord. Don't run away from the Lord, run mm. to Him. He yeah. wants to comfort you. Yeah, really running to Him is the main thing. Mm. David didn't run away from the giant. No. Yeah, he ran to it because he knew he had the Lord. And when you have the Lord, you will be able to run and face your circumstances. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So we've been discussing a few things and today we decided we want to, the Lord wanted us to talk about how to declare your future. You know, these are the, pretty much, we call them the last days. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that the Lord is has, having a specific word for these last days. And He just wants you to declare that word. And He's got the word, but, he, but as you wait upon the Lord, like we're saying, He will reveal Himself to you and He will reveal your future to you. Mm. So I want to take a key scripture from Jeremiah 29, 11. Some of you may have read this, some of you may have not read it, but let's just read it again. There are some key things that I want to share with you. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, 
to give you an expected end. Mm. That's amazing verse, you know. The Lord is saying, I know everything that I'm thinking about you. I have a good plan for you. Mm. That word thoughts there means his intentions or his good plans. You know, the Lord says that word thoughts means his advice. God wants to advise you. He wants to be your counselor. It also means imaginations, inventions, and his purpose. Mm. God wants to think good things about you. And he is thinking good things about mm. you. And it also says, it's amazing. It says advice. The Lord wants to give you advice. Maybe you're facing something that you say, I, I don't know, I've never faced this situation before. And I've come up to it the first time. And so the Lord says, I want to help you. I want to give you advice how, yeah. to, how to go through this. You know, I was uh, looking at this scripture as you were talking. I was thinking, it says that God has plans to give us an expected end. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know that God has an expected end for you, you will want to go after his plan. That's right. Because, you know, you know, some people are finding the plan of God. And some of them think, you know, when bad things have happened, that that is the plan of God. But it really was the enemy's plan in the beginning. Mm. But God has an expected end for us. You know, our end can be good. It doesn't have to be bad just because something bad happened in the past. It can be an expected end. Yeah, that word yeah. expected end also means something that you long for, something mm. that you desire. Yeah. Our expected end should be number one, to seek the Lord. Yeah. When you seek the Lord, you can know that. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. It says that also in one yeah. scripture. You know, Paul, when I think of the life of Paul, he had a really kind of a bad past. He did. Well, if he was persecuting the church, he would have had murder in his mind all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was just thinking maybe we could just go to that scripture for a minute. You know, because some of you out there, you might be thinking, well, I really had a bad past. I don't think anything could change now. Let's see what Paul had to say about that. I just want to quickly take you to that scripture. Let's go to Philippians. It's Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to see verse 13. And we're going to see verse 14. Now, remember, Paul, he was a Pharisee before he got saved. And he thought he was doing God's service, you know, persecuting the church and everything. And then you see his past and you compare him to the way um, he was in the New Testament and things that he wrote. You can't imagine he was a person like that. No. Let's see this scripture. If you've got a Bible out there, we're in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, now Paul is saying here, he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or understood but this one thing I do. Let's see what the one thing is he's saying. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. And this is the amazing part. Reaching forth unto the things which are before. Let's see verse 14 as well. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to take a look at this part in verse 13. He says, I'm reaching forth unto those things that are before. Hmm. What are those things that are before? The things that God planned for us before the foundation of the world. Amen. Those are the things that are before. Hmm. You know, those are the good he, plans God has for us. Amen. And he yeah. says reaching. It means he has to keep pressing. Mm. I mean, yeah. the, the future is not going to pull you. Yeah, you have not. to press into yeah. the future. Your past will pull you back. Mm, that's but right. But your future, you have to press forward. Yeah, that, that's good. Because the past will always try to be like a chain, trying to hold you back. Mm. But God wants you to let go of those chains. And even as we sang the song, I will wait on the Lord, that will release you from a lot of bondage. Mm. Because God wants us to reach for the things that are before. Amen, that's right. And your yeah. future is not just talking about, you know, 20 years from now or 40 years from now. Your future could be the next minute. Mm. Your future could be tomorrow. Yeah. So God is wanting good things, not just in 20 years time, not in 40 years time. God mm. wants to give you good things yeah. and His good thoughts for the next minute, for the next yeah. day. And you know, there is no person that has done anything wrong who can say, well, my, I, my past is so bad, I don't think God could receive me. I don't think. But when you look at Paul, Paul says, I was the chief of all sinners. Mm. It means he says he was a real sinner. Mm. I mean, he was a Pharisee 
But then he says, I was the chiefest of all sinners. Right. You know, he was hiding a lot of pain inside of him and Jesus knew it. Everybody around saw that he was a persecutor of the church, a murderer. But inside of him, I'm sure he was hurting. He That's was. why God yes. reached him. You know, mm -hmm. God reaches people. Yeah. And yeah, in, yeah. you know, the children of Israel, just talking about uh, your past trying to pull you back in your future. Mm. The children of Israel, when they uh, left Egypt, they came out of bondage, mm. okay, to type and shadow of the world. Yeah. And they faced in front of them what seemed like an obstacle, the mm. Red Sea, right? And they had a decision, a choice to make. And now the Egyptians were following them, right? And they had the ability to pull them back as long as they stayed mm. where they were. That's right. But the Israelites had to choose to go through that Red Sea. Mm. Sometimes your, your obstacle or your problem may be right in front of you and your past is at the back. It is mm. normally like that. And normally you have to choose to press forward through that problem, mm. through that obstacle to get onto the other side. Yeah, yeah, that's your right. future is that the same way. Yeah. Otherwise, the world's going to try to pull you back. And I think that's the reason why Paul is saying I press toward the mark. Yeah. Because he would have had a lot of thoughts in his mind. Well, what am I doing here? You know, you know, if you read um, in Corinthians, he gives a list of all the persecutions that came upon him after he became a Christian. It was terrible. I think, I mean, you wouldn't have ever thought he would have been going through all those. Mm -hmm. But because he was serving the Lord, people didn't like it. And so they thought he was the problem. Yeah. And the Jesus that he was preaching, they mm -hmm. just didn't want that. But Paul says, I'm pressing toward the mark. You know, mm -hmm. there are times in this world, you have to press toward the mark of God. Yeah. Because in the world, you know, the Bible says that the world is passing away. Everything is passing away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. Abides forever. And because the word of the Lord abides forever, that's what we press after. Mm -hmm. And God, you know, um, I said this last time in the program also, God has not just given us a book just full of pages and, and, and words and things like that. These, these words are full of life Amen. and they have life to really change your future. They do. They do. You know, if Paul, a person like Paul could change, I mean, his future was totally changed. So can your future. It can change with mm. the help of God. And the good thing is God has a good plan for us. Yeah. He doesn't have anything bad to give us. The Bible says every good and every perfect gift mm. comes from the Father of light. That's right. He wants to give us all good things. Yeah. Just going back to Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So he has good intentions for us. And he says, thoughts of peace. Mm. That word peace is powerful. Now, the opposite of peace is confusion. Mm. So, but you know, God said he's not the God of confusion. That's right. Yeah. So the word, let's just uh, go through the word confusion and see what it means. If you're experiencing any of, any of these in confusion, you know, know that it's not God's will. Okay. Confusion or in, in the scripture, it also says not of evil. His mm. thoughts are not of evil. Yeah. And confusion and evil and all means bad or something, misfortune or a loss. Okay. It could mean a hardship. It could be suffering. Mm. It could be an illness. Mm. Okay. It could be a grief or a hurt or yeah. a misery, sorrow, trouble. And God doesn't want you to have any of this yeah. mental agitation. Mm. That's terrible. It's terrible. And it says, he, he doesn't have any of these thoughts for us. I mean, mm. you may be going through some of these, but know that it's not from God. Yeah. Because like we explained the few programs before, there is one who is responsible for evil. Mm. But God is a giver of good gifts. Yeah. And the word peace there is also interesting. It means safety and rest. It also means prosperity. God wants to bless your future. Mm. He doesn't have any poverty in your future. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing is, how do we access that? Everybody wants to know. Yeah. How do I get that good life? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great when we talk about it, that God has a good future mm. for us. But we are here to tell you how you can really have that. Not yeah. just to say that you know, there's a great future out there and there are great things that you can do out there. But we're here to tell you how your future can be changed with the word of God. Because that's the key, the word of God for our future. Amen. God's word for our future. And that scripture you also mentioned, you know, God is not the author of confusion. Mm. There's something interesting in that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You know, it's so good, but we can know that our future can be changed. Mm. You know, not living in knowing, well, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Mm. Knowing that your future can be good. That's one of the greatest assurances you can have. First is your salvation, 
but then knowing that your future is secure and you have a great future. Yeah, and it's not just a, a heavenly life in heaven. Mm. You can live a heavenly life here on earth. You know, that's the amazing thing. Yeah. The abundant life that Jesus came to give us yeah. was to enjoy that's right. life here. So in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. That word confusion is terrible. Mm. And it says, he's not the author of confusion. And then there's another good scripture in James. I, I just wrote these down because they just tallied together. They just went together. Yeah. And in, I think it's really good, you know, turning to scriptures and, you know, looking at what God has because um, we're not talking out of just some knowledge. We really know that this is the word of God because mm. the Holy Spirit reveals things to us and he's able to reveal to you because, you know, it, it, there's no respecter of persons with God. No, he's not respecter. Everyone. Yeah, when you come into the kingdom of God, you really find out how much amazing things you can learn mm. in being in the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. So God gives us peace. That's the number one thing we saw. Mm. And he's not the author of confusion. He's a good plan for you. James chapter 3 and verse 16. How do you know when there is a confused state around? How do you know when you're facing confusion? Let's read the scripture. James chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For wherever there is envying and strife, there is confusion and every evil mm. work. So envying or being jealous and strife, which means contention or an arguing spirit mm. or any kind of spirit of competition, all that equals to confusion. Yeah. And it leads to every evil work. And in Jeremiah, he said he doesn't have any thoughts of evil for yeah. us. So if you're facing all these, these areas of confusion, envying, strife, know that that's not God's plan. Yeah. God's plan is not for mm. envying and strife. Yeah, Jeremiah 29, 11 is the foundation that his thoughts are good toward us mm. and expected it. Yeah. Confusion is not from God. No, it's not. You know, God doesn't make people confused. It's not from Him. Mm. That's the main thing you need to be settled is that God is not the author of confusion. Mm. There is a devil out there yeah. in this world. That's and, right. And, yeah. and in your life, you may have seen somebody who is having, like, it seems like they have everything that they need. And you may be feeling a bit of jealous coming, yeah, a jealous spirit jealous coming spirit. upon yeah. you. And you may say, how come God, that person has everything and I don't have a good future? How come my life is miserable and terrible right now? Yeah. Well, that's not God's plan. Yeah. God doesn't want you to be jealous of somebody else. Yeah. God will bless you just as much as he has blessed whoever else that person is. Yeah. God loves you so much. Like you said, he's no respecter of persons. Yeah, he's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about living the life that God has for you is knowing that God loves me equally. I mean, he doesn't, he's not favoring somebody else. You know, he's not favoring somebody else. And, you know, I remember I was talking to some a girl on the phone, one of my friends, and she's saying, well, God, you know, God favors you more than me. And I said, that's not true. I said, God loves you equally. You just have to know that his love is so real because the more you spend time in his word, the more you begin to understand how much of love he has for you. He's given us his word. Yeah, there is, and that's yeah, the you know, there is thing. no proof, need for God to appear. You know, there is no need for that. Jesus was there, and people still couldn't believe in Him. Mm. But you know, when you look at the disciples, their future was totally changed because they had the Holy Spirit in them, and they did greater works. Amen. You know, their future was changed. You know, Jesus came. When you see, really, He was actually changing those twelve disciples' future. Yeah, being there on the earth, He was changing their future, their destiny. They couldn't see it that time. But when they got the Holy Spirit, they saw the future was changed. Mm. And that's what God does. He changes our future if we just let Him. That's because they pressed toward the future. They yeah. didn't go back to their past. They yeah. didn't go back to their mistakes. They chose to press forward. Jesus said this and we're going. You know, it also reminds me of that story when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. And He said, let's get into the boat and go on to the other side. Mm. He didn't say, let's go and swim in the boat. Yeah. He didn't say, let's just go and stay, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the sea and see how the weather feels like how it's going to go. If the storms are bad, let's head back yeah. home. He didn't say that. No. We're going on to the other side. That's yeah. the word of the Lord. Yeah. And so in the middle of the sea, there's a big storm, there's a big uh, turmoil and all this wind and everything is against the ship. 
And so the disciples get troubled, they get afraid, and they, they wake up Jesus. Jesus was sleeping in the boat, and then they wake him up and say, don't you care that we perish? Mm. They don't thought you... their future was going to change. Exactly. Yeah. They thought their future is not going to be there anymore. But Jesus had already said, we're going to the other side. Yeah, one word from God can change your future. Yeah. Can change your mindset. Yeah. And so Jesus woke up, and all he said was, peace, be still. Mm. He spoke words that took them to the other side. Mm. He yeah. what, spoke words. Yeah, you know, I was even as I was meditating on this subject, you know, let's quickly just go to First Peter. You kind of really get a understanding of really how you can love life. And I think that word love life is some word we use today a lot. Mm. You no, know, I want to love life. And you know, the Bible really has an answer for that. Let's just see that quickly in First Peter, chapter three and verse 10. Now let's pay attention to these words. You know, I've highlighted them and just pay attention to these words because they're really important. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, For he that will love life and see good days. How many of you want to have good days in your life? I want to. Let's see what it says. It says, Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no deceit. Hmm. And verse 11 is also talking about doing right and searching after peace. But I want to really focus on that first verse, verse 10. Let him keep his tongue from evil. Now that's kind of the key where we can love life and see good days. Love life it's, means yeah. to enjoy life. Enjoy life. Hmm. That means, you know, you want to enjoy your life, which is your future, of course. Yeah. And you want to enjoy and see good days. Hmm. It starts with our tongue. Nobody plans for sickness to come upon themselves. Nobody yeah. waits. I'm, I'm waiting for this sickness to come mm. and attack me. Nobody wants yeah. that. Everybody Nobody. loves life. Yeah. Wants to see good days. And the key there is knowing how to keep our words in line with God's word. Amen. That's the yeah. key. That's the right You thing. know, those disciples could have actually drowned. They would have actually drowned. If Jesus didn't come and speak those words. No, they would have drowned. Because they said, we are dying. Not mm. that we're going to die, we are dying. We are perishing. Yeah, we are perishing. Mm. They could have. Yeah. Until Jesus came and rebuked them. Mm. Jesus he had to words. change yeah. those words so that mm. they could go on to the other side. You know, sometimes you have to stop the evil words that even others try to speak mm. over your future. Yeah. A lot of people, they speak bad words, oh, you, you will never make it, you, yeah. know, you have a bad life, you know. Mm. I mean, uh, maybe you, you've done some several wrong things in your life and people mm. come and judge you and they speak evil over you. Mm. But you know what? You don't have to be moved by those yeah. words. You, you have to say what Jesus said. Yeah. If you've been walking with Jesus, you've been spending time with His Word, you will speak His Word. Yeah. And what is it to speak His Word? Well, speak the promises of God. Like say, sickness is really attacking your body. And though you've heard this many times, the easiest verse you can really say is, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. Mm. Now you could really change future of your life by saying those words over and over again. Right. You know the woman with the issue of blood in, in, uh, in the book of Mark, she said she was having a disease and it was terrible. I mean, nobody could cure it, no doctor at all. But she said out of her mouth, she heard of Jesus' words. Now see, she heard the word of God and she took it. And she said, right. if I just touch his garment, I will be made whole. You know, I like what she says there. She doesn't say, I will be healed. And, yeah. Because she wanted to be whole also in her mind. Mm. You know, you know, if thoughts start coming again, what if I get it again? She said, I'm going to be whole, even in my mind, even in my thoughts. Mm. And God's words can change the situation. Even in my spirit. Yeah. She, maybe she probably got salvation. Yeah. Do you she know, would've. her future was changed there her again. Her future was changed. Her future was changed there just by knowing the word of God that she could be whole. She yeah. changed her future. Yeah, and, and there's an interesting thing that I wrote down here. The Lord said, God is the only one who can reveal your future to you. Mm. No soothsayer, no witchcraft ways can reveal your future to you. They may say, I can tell you your future. Just give me your palm. But mm. you know what? God is the only one who can reveal your yeah. future. And sometimes when you go to these people, they can give you a bad future. Mm. But you know, that's not from God. Yeah. Like we said, God doesn't have bad future. They mm. don't even have a future to tell you, those kind mm. of people. God is the only one who can reveal your future to you. Yeah. And He wants you with your mouth, with your words to speak your future. Mm. You're the only one who can change your destiny. Yeah. Speak the word of God. That's the main thing. Speak the word of God over your future. 
And maybe right now, well, even as we close the program, we just want to pray a prayer and believe God for your future, that it will be changed because God has a great future. So let's take this moment. Would you like to pray for the audience? Yes. Just, you know, even as we pray and thank God that you have a great future, just agree with us even as we pray right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for all the viewers who are watching from around the world, from around the country, in their homes, in their living rooms, maybe on the internet, Father. We pray for these people who say, I want to have a good future. I want to know what my life is going to be like. Father, I pray that you will reveal yourself to them as they spend time with you in the Word and as they speak your Word only, Father. You will show them that you love them and that you have a good plan for them. Father, I rebuke every evil thought and every evil evil word that has been spoken over these people, their lives are going to be changed. Mm. They're not going to live the same anymore. I thank you, Jesus, for one word which will change mm. their destiny. One word from you will change their destiny. And I thank you, Jesus, the viewers will speak the word and they'll see a change in their life, in their future. Amen. Amen.